So, our new telescope is the Vespera Observation Station from Veonis. Veonis is a company out of France. We actually had the chance to interview, that's how I found out about Veonis, I had a chance to interview Cyril Dupuy, who is the CEO. Uh, he, we learned about his STEM origin story in the episode, how he was, he was uh, into optics and, and telescopes and astronomy, and then he had this opportunity to start this company and make observation of the stars a more regular thing, more accessible, and something that you can then just enjoy the experience of observing the stars and not be tinkering with the telescope to get it to work or setting it up every single time. And that's a major reason why I ended up getting uh, the pre-order for the telescope. Now, the pre-order, pre I ended up saving some money on it. Right now, it is available on veonis.com. Uh, they are selling it. They have, there's some other resellers of telescopes that that have it as well, but um, it is right now uh, essentially twenty five hundred dollars U.S. So it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I w I probably wouldn't have gotten it at that price, but it was fourteen ninety nine for uh, for pre order, and I definitely lucked out on that. They had some delays in shipping. It did take them a while to get it to me, but they delivered me a solid product. And, uh, we're not, we're not, uh, in any way sponsored by Veonis, although I definitely tried, uh, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll keep posting about it, we'll see what happens, but, um, right now, this is just a customer, myself, uh, and, and the reason that we bought, like, why did we buy this telescope? Uh, I have a Newtonian telescope in my basement, uh, I, and if there's anyone that knows how to fix this, please let me know. Please email us at todayinspacepodcast at gmail.com. But the Newtonian telescope, the lens is out of whack, uh, and I think it needs to be, there are like three bolts that align the angle of it and, and kind of the height. So I definitely messed around with it and messed it up. So I have no idea how to fix that. But I figured if I have a telescope that is looking at the right thing and we know what it looks like, I can tune the other telescope. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, but that was my hope. So if you know a better way or someone who I can talk to about this, please let us know. Today is based podcast at gmail.com. Uh, but uh, so the telescope has been incredible. I got it in February. It arrived after like, it's almost a year since I had pre-ordered it. So um, it took a while, but it delivered. If you go to Today in Space Pod on Instagram, our uh, Facebook page at uh, Today in Space Podcast, and we also post some videos on TikTok, but the pictures that we're getting from this telescope are amazing. This telescope is definitely made for nebulas and galaxies and star clusters and things that are really grand that have lots of color. I can also look at the moon. The moon is in a, uh, it's the full screen, you know, it's not the full screen, but you can get a an HD image of the moon. Uh, and it's great. I have a solar filter for it now, so I was able to look at the sun the other day. For us, this telescope is the only telescope and setup that, I have the time for that we can provide actual astronomy photos, actually like astrophotos, astrophotography uh, for the podcast. And even to the point with how easy it's been to observe, again, when there's clear nights, I live in New England, it's a nightmare for uh, stargazing, but it's allowed me to look at nebulas. I, I put it on my, my driveway, I put it on my back deck, and I'm able to see things that I didn't think were possible unless I was maybe like up north in Maine or something like that. So, or in Greece, man, in Greece on the islands, oh, there's no light pollution. It's great. And the power goes out every once in a while. So then it's, then it's really good. But this telescope has really allowed me to, it, it does what Cyril said it the original goal was the the Vespera telescope. They they also have the Stellina, which is higher grade. 
you know, you're able to see more uh, higher quality, but Vespera is really a great mid ground. You're basically buying a high definition camera that's built into a telescope, and there's an app that you can use, and it's it's called Singularity, and you can. At some point, you know, the, the great thing is that you can point it at whatever you want and it tells you what's in your, you know, it knows where you are, uses GPS, it figures out where you are, then it looks at the stars and, and calculates, which, you know, I have an old, I, I grew up with a telescope, that's probably one of the things that lit the early flames of, of space specifically, but um, this was the 90s, so the early 2000, and a lot of it was like manually finding yourself. And it was just too much for a 10 year old, uh, to really, to really figure out. Um, I was able to get it to work sometimes, but not always. Uh, it was a Celestron, but this telescope, I mean, the app connects, it tracks, and then I'm just able to say, all right, what's out there tonight. It tells me what's visible. It tells me, um, the position in the sky you can even schedule it and say like it'll tell you like where it is in the sky and and you can say you know it tells you you need 30 minutes for you know an ideal exposure you need 60 minutes for an ideal exposure and you can look at what's available and you can plot it out you can say all right observe this from you know 9 to 9 30 and then we're going to go look at m42 at 9 30 to 10 and then let's go to the crab nebula 10 to 10 30. So that's, that's crazy. And there's some flaws, definitely. But I think there, as long as you go into it with a good expectation and understanding of what you're buying, I think this is a really great thing. Again, uh, we don't yet have a link where you can buy it, uh, through, through it so that like we get a kickback or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm looking into some kind of like an affiliate link for that. But I'm definitely going to be putting together a video if you're at all interested in in getting this for yourself. I, uh, you know, one of the things I'm really excited about is here in March, there is a comet. I missed the I missed that comet that just flew by. That was you know once in a once in a very long time, uh, so long that I, people might not even remember uh, that <laughs> that we we saw it before, but. To be able to look at a comet and get a decent picture is crazy. I mean, that means we can keep up with astronomical events and have our own eyes on the sky. Our little spaceship today in space has gained a very valuable eye in the sky with Vespera. So we're we're really excited. I can't wait to put out. We're gonna put the review video out on YouTube. Um, we're kind of switching it up. We're doing we're we're making sure that the audio stuff comes out and then. People of Science interviews, we're putting up the video, obviously, because we're doing it on, on Zoom anyways. Um, but also, like, for things like the review, we want to go a little bit higher production, spend a little bit more time editing. Uh, so that way we have something that's that's great. And one of our most popular videos was Cyril's, was a clip from the interview that we did with Cyril. So there's definitely something here. I'm definitely ready to speak with all the the old school telescope, manual telescope or like custom rig telescope folks. I am not looking to replace <laughs> the classic telescope. The reason I got this is because I have so many things that I tinker with. I have, if I told you I had five 3D printers in my basement, I would be lying to you. It would be closer to double that. And so I have too many things to tinker with. I have this Mac that decides to have issues all the time. I got to tinker with this. I tinker with 3D printers at work. I got a lot of things that I tinker with. I don't need another thing that I tinker with. I need something that I can make content with. And I think that's ultimately the power of this telescope. So we're going to put it to the test. Uh, the Great American Eclipse is next year, uh, and we'll probably be going to Maine to watch that. So, uh, I can't wait to bring this thing up there. That's going to be very, very exciting. But that's our episode for this week, folks. Thank you for joining us. 